I am here with Brian. Oh, yeah. See, I have so many Brian's in my life. This one is white. Yes, white. <laughs> I was kidding. Right. I, knew you, I knew who you were all along. <laughs> well, I know who you are too, Randy. So we're we're off to a good start. All right. Now that we've gotten the introductions out of the way, Brian, uh, I understand you've been south of the border. Yes, I am in Monterrey, Mexico, as we speak, the state of oh. Nuevo León, where I uh, have been looking at uh, all kinds of things, Chinese cars, uh, but also the factory site itself. And it's uh, it looks different on the ground than it does from the air. And there are a number of issues that I'd raised in the past that people kind of hand waved away that are more serious than I realized, specifically the grading of the site. It doesn't it's not just at the foot of a hill, it is a hill. It's it is a hill, a hill. In, in two directions, and it's a rocky hill. So grading it is going to be quite challenging. And the amount of level ground right there is also going to be a challenge. Maybe they're going to put it up on the hill so I have a view. Well, the other possibility is maybe they want the grade because uh -huh. something in the factory line prefers gravity. I mean, you know, maybe that's, I, I don't know. We they will could find out. George, they could do the George Bush house thing where he built it into a hill, kind of like a cave. Well, yeah, I think Bob Hope did that too. Yeah. But I think that uh, grading is going to be a, a, real... a cumbersome process. Wow, wow. But there is no evidence of any kind of caterpillar tractors uh, are nothing out there nope. not a, just working not a, on the concrete pillars for the new overpass but at an absolute snail's pace okay you said you looked at a couple of chinese cars was there anything specific in that that you want to report on or not especially i have a video that will be coming out but it's there's not much to report i went out to the byd dealership uh next door was the omida dealership i think that's the name of it and um there are some Chinese brands that you will see, but not on the road. I've yet, to, I've seen a number of Teslas on the road, uh -huh. but I've seen no BYDs. I've seen no, uh, I did see a Volvo at the BYD dealership. I don't know if it was an employee car or a, a, a used car for sale, but they were, but they are rare. They are super, super rare, but they've really only been in the market a, a couple years. So they're not very common yet. I uh, I happened to go to a party on uh, Saturday night, I th yeah, Saturday night uh, in West LA and in uh, three homes, no, two homes, two homes in the driveways and on the street, there were six Teslas. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so you saw more at that little get together then I have seen the entire time here, excluding dealerships. Excluding the dealership. <laughs> All right. Well, our main topic for today is this morning, not rabid Republicans like me, but just normal mm -hmm. folks like CNBC and Barron's and, and Market Watch and all kinds of people are calling the stock market move this morning, the Trump rally, and then other people are looking at Tesla stock this morning and seeing it in the 260s again and saying that the move today is based on the Trump love affair with Elon Musk now that might turn into something in the January uh, in the new administration. So I was kind of thinking, why don't we, we're, politics aside, just looking at this from a completely technical standpoint, like right. pretending that Elon is just a, a uh, uh, one des desiring to curry favor. Let's just say he's a, he's a lobbyist and should get his lobbying card <laughs> and he's doing what he's doing just to curry favor. Uh, we'll pretend that's not necessarily what I think is happening. But uh, what, what do you see in terms of the benefits and maybe detriments uh, that might come out of or Tesla specifically, that might come out of a good relationship with the White House in January? It's very common for business leaders to contribute to a variety of politicians, certainly your local ones, because you want to keep friends local. Um, 
but across the country, people, you might donate to a congressman who is on a certain committee that oversees transportation or um, energy infrastructure or something like that. Just so that uh, when you need to make a phone call, you've got their ear and you can say, look, hey man, come on, I gave you some money. Now that's cynical and gross, but exactly how it works. Yeah, yeah. The sausage uh, I think gets made. The I think you'll agree with me made. on that. Um, there are some people who will see this move and go, this is the best thing ever. And some who will see it and say, it's the worst thing ever. Uh, I am going back and revising my future projections based on this wow. because uh, it, while this will potentially make red state voters more likely to buy a Tesla, um, currently all the Teslas are sold in blue places. And if those people feel strongly enough, it could have a downside in terms of product, in terms of deliveries. Money always talks. If your car is that much better, it doesn't matter. When the, when Tesla dropped their prices five grand last year, I saw people on social media saying, "Man, I really hate that guy, but five grand, come yeah. on." <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but what that also means is those people would have paid five thousand more if they uh, believed that they aligned with the politics of the person. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they do align with the politics. I'm saying it's not about whether you do or not. We don't even know what the politics are of most CEOs. It's about the perception. So what I think will happen is the sales part is the, is the smallest part of it. Mm -hmm. Republicans have consistently vowed to overturn, to repeal the uh, IRA which has the EV subsidies, the charging subsidies, the battery uh, manufacturing subsidies. And if you look at their the voting, every Republican in the House voted against the IRA, every right. single one. Right. So this is, if, if, uh, if the power dynamic shifts in Washington, the IRA is gone. And if the IRA is gone, that will impact sales uh, especially of Tesla. Tesla would be the hardest hit by it because Tesla is Tesla buyers are by far the largest beneficiary of this bill. So if anything, I would think Wall Street would look at that and say, this is an anti-Tesla possibility. Yeah. It's interesting. Most of the pundits, the Morgan Stanleys and et cetera, have, have said that while the repeal of the IRA would be uh, difficult on the EVs in general, that Tesla would benefit the most or would would be hurt the least because they have the pricing power. They have the margins. They have the scale. Uh, they are going to be introducing a less expensive car now. Um, so they have all of these advantages over their competition that would generally. So it might mean that all all boats go lower, but that yes, Tesla's would go less low. <laughs> yes. And that's, and that's the concern I have. It's not that Tesla will fare the worst. It's that uh, Tesla will do the least bad. I don't want them to do the least bad. I want them to do good right. or very good or the best. Right. Um, all EV sales will absolutely be impacted if the credit goes away. Uh, it means that there's no longer a strategic advantage for Hyundai to build a factory in the U S um, and the battery credit would be gone. So domestic battery manufacturing would probably be canceled. Tesla would continue to build some, a few other makers would build some, but that $10 per kilowatt hour, just for pack assembly, that 35 on top of it for making the cells, that is a vast amount of money that these manufacturers were counting on and they won't be back. If this is canceled, they won't be back. They'll say, look, we, we trusted, uh, a, a short-term shift to be permanent and uh, we got burned. These yeah. companies will have lost billions. They will not be back. The U.S. will cede its place in the world for battery manufacturing, certainly, but likely also for EV manufacturing because if EVs are no longer incentivized, if EVs are no longer a priority, GM and Ford are going to just lean back into the gas cars and return to mad profitability. And that's true of all the U.S. automakers. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. So uh, the goal I thought was to transition the world to a sustainable energy economy. Mm -hmm. And if that's the goal, if that's the mission, 
this runs counter to that mission. Right. So to clap back at that a little bit of if, in fact, Elon will have President Trump's ear and if they are, you know, become uh, bros, you know, and hang out together and, you know, go down to the wherever it is that they would hang out in, in D.C. And they and Elon now has the ability to speak to him about these things. I mean, like, for instance, I don't think that Trump was pro Bitcoin six months ago, but all of a sudden he is now a champion of Bitcoin. That has uh, certainly changed a lot of minds. And and people this morning are saying that Bitcoins are up like 2,600, you know, I keep for, it's such a big number. I, yes, 2,600 points last time I checked, uh, $2,600. And people are saying that's also a Trump rally. Um, it, it could be that Elon would convince or uh, talk to him about this whole energy problem and also the strategic aspects of it. So, hey, hey, Mr. Trump, we've got this problem coming up with these data centers that are going in and it's going to be all you, we're going to need to pump. We're going to need to hit gas. We're going to need to we're going to have to do everything we can possibly do nukes everything in order to be able to possibly solve this problem over the next five or six years. And then after that, some things are probably going to start giving way like oil and maybe natural gas might be another five years before natural gas. So that kind of conversation. And then on top of that, as you mentioned, bring up the strategic part of it. And we cannot be the loser in this battery race and there is a potential for us to be a significant player in the battery race. Um, how about that kind of an argument? Is that something that maybe some Republicans and or President Trump might listen to? So we don't have to guess what their relationship would be like. They've had, he's already been president. They already had a relationship. Elon was appointed to the Technology Council, which was never allowed to meet or do anything. He was the first person to leave that council because we're not doing anything. Nothing right. is happening. Right. So that having his ear doesn't mean you have his ear for policy. Um, he'll have people for that. And the people that are in his you know, preliminary council, the people he worked with before, the people he's likely to appoint this time, do not share that interest. Um, these are, I mean, I, you can go check if you want and see how oil and gas stocks are doing today. I assume the whole market is up, including oil and gas stocks. But if those have boomed, that tells you what the experts actually think, what the investor, what the institutional investors are actually, how they're perceiving this. So I don't think that there's a lot of, I don't think that will help at all. I think him being his friend doesn't help at all. The SEC, when they crawled right up Elon's business for the funding secured tweet, uh, that was under the last president. That wasn't under Biden. So the idea that uh, all these agencies will get off Tesla's back magically under a new administration is not supported by historical data, historical evidence from the past presidents. The only president yeah, who's so, been favorable. Yes. Right. Yeah. So to, th that's so been, yeah, go ahead. So to, so to make the counter argument in that era, just uh, an entire six or seven years ago, <laughs> ancient when, history, Randy, ancient history, when Elon left that panel, Elon's politics were slightly different. Um, when he left, See, I, I didn't, I didn't think he had politics six or seven years ago. <laughs> no, he was, no, I'm, I, I'm, I, you call him a traditional it wasn't on my radar. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would say that six or seven years ago, he was a, what they call a classic liberal, a uh, free speech guy, but, but not heavily involved in most of the fights that were going on. But over, as we know, over the course of time, that's why some folks got mad at him. He was moving more and more to the conservative side of things. And that's caused a lot of, uh, of upset. Well, so then the argument could be made, which I think you were making a minute ago, that he's ingratiating himself with the right, that the right, the, that conservatives would now be more inclined to buy an electric car because they won't, they will feel, oh, let's, let's take another look at this guy. Maybe he's okay. And that that would also, and of course, money talks, <laughs> money talks where conversation often doesn't. So the contributions would also be important. And then he's also aligned himself with these, uh, with the um, all in podcast guys and with Bill Ackman and some of these other folks uh, who will also obviously be pretty significant players in the new administration. I don't think the all in podcast guys 
hate uh, hate uh, renewables. I uh, so uh, I don't follow the that podcast. Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Okay, uh, so I can't can't speak to that. Uh, I can say that uh, it doesn't matter how much rural voters don't hate Elon or love Elon. There's no charging infrastructure there. And I can tell you from having driven through some of the emptier parts of the country, there are plenty of corridors with chargers, but vastly more without. And I talked to the guy who, when he would go visit his daughter who lived a hundred miles away, 150, whatever it was, when he would leave her house, he would have to drive 30 miles further to charge and then drive home. Mm-hmm. That's, that's something that's happening in the middle of the country. You're not going to buy one of those cars unless it works for you. And in those places, it doesn't work yet. Um, the good news is there is a whole program to get chargers built in those places, but the same politicians are committed to canceling it. And I've seen a lot of really terrible misinformation about it on X recently, where someone people are saying, oh, well, they spent $70 billion to get eight chargers. And that is a lie. That is an outright, that is oil propaganda money at work. The 70 billion hasn't been spent, only like two. <laughs> and it and uh, Tesla alone has built more chargers than that with their tiny slice of the pie. Mm-hmm. So these chargers are, and, and most of them are, are not yet complete. They've Mm -hmm. begun Mm -hmm. because the program is brand new and it takes time to implement. Right. But those will, those are on the chopping block. So I don't know how we're going to sell cars to people that live in places without chargers. And I don't know how we're going to give them chargers if we're canceling the program that was designed exactly for that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to slow adoption. It's going to slow adoption is my concern. And the big three US automakers will now have much less incentive to participate. And what this means is all batteries will be Chinese and all EVs, at least outside the US, will be Chinese. And it um, saddens me because I had hoped that the US would uh, adopt policies that would allow us to maintain our advantage uh, as, the, as the tech innovator of the world. You know, for a long time, we were the the uh, biggest agricultural power in the world. And then we're the biggest manufacturing power in the world. And now what we really are is the best innovators in the world. Right. And China's coming for us. And the difference between us and China is China's innovators have support from on high and ours do not. Yeah. We have this unusual, this weird system of changing governments every four or eight years and, uh, you know, four years ago, there was a bunch of pipelines and oil people that got burned and, and now we, this time it could be that the energy, the, uh, renewable energy sector gets burned. You know, I'm a massive fan of renewables, so I'm not in any way, shape or form hoping that this happens. I, I personally think that the, the, and I think this is where Elon stands also. I think that the, the, um, uh, subsidies were too high. It was too big of a package. What I'm hoping is is that there will be a compromise. That's my that's my Pollyannish my Pollyannish position <laughs> is that if there's a if there's a lot of pressure actually because I don't know that this is going to be the first thing on anybody's list, um, but if there's enough pressure to actually roll back the IRA, that. Elon, uh, uh, Ackman's, the, the the guys from the All In, Chamath, you know, these guys will be getting Elon's ear and say, look, we need to this for strategic reasons, and we need this uh, in order to be able to uh, provide the power that's going to be necessary for these data centers, and that those two things will prevail at least to talk, to talk in terms of reducing this massive amount that's not really necessary. You and I have actually talked about the fact that at a certain point, the batteries are free under this program and Mm -hmm. it's not necessary to get the batteries to free to make it, to make it uh, uh, viable. Well, that's so a good part of it. So what we're looking at is these are the politicians who said, who for a decade screamed repeal and replace, but had no plan to replace their plan was to repeal. 
this will be the same thing. If if you want to, I agree that it would be wonder. I would love to see a world in which our uh, legislation matched the caliber of their of our great thinkers, but it don't happen. And hoping for that is insanity. We've well, never seen it happen before. <laughs> well, and that's great, but I can't. But again, I just focus on what's verifiable and based on the track record of terrible legislation. I, and yes, I agree that there are so many ways the IRA could have been better written, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And the plan is, they are not saying, let's get a better plan. They're saying, kill it. Yeah. And that's who, that's who, there's a very real possibility that these are going to be the people in charge in a matter of months. And if they are, that's bad for EVs. There's no other way to spin it. And if it you, just, I, if I, you, some people hate certain groups so much that it doesn't compare to how much they love EVs. Right. I, I just had a perfect idea. I've got the solution, the answer. Why didn't we think of this? We're going to put Tesla boomer mama in charge of this. You, well, the, the problem is she's too smart. <laughs> she would do a good job. And that's the problem. We can't have, wait, smart and competent people. Randy, do you understand how this grift works? <laughs> and that's the reality. I, you know unfortunately, that. unfortunately, I was actually actively involved in the transportation sector as a lobby. bicycle salesman. No, as a, as a lobbyist, I, uh, I, there was a diamond lane placed on the Santa Monica freeway back in 1970 something, um, which the highway patrol and everybody else was against. And the Jerry Brown administration was putting this diamond lane, taking away a lane of the busiest freeway in the world. And I decided that that was the craziest thing I've ever, ever heard of and went to war against that, ended up testifying in Sa Sacramento a number of times on legislation to get it eliminated and ended up knowing a lot of the board of supervisors, LA board supervisors and city council people and whatnot. And people were saying, Randy, uh, now that you've gotten rid of the diamond lane, you need to run for office. And I was like, I, I didn't even want to be a lawyer. Why would I want to be a politician? <laughs> These people are just awful. So yes, I know about the sausage making uh, that takes place. Uh, it is, uh, um, uh, it, it's not pretty. But so far, it's served us well um, it, it, uh, to make us the greatest country on earth. Um, and yeah, it's going to be messy. And I'm still going to be optimistic. And I'm going to send my letter to uh, to uh, Mr. Trump and tell him what I think. All right. <laughs> I'm hoping Tesla Boomer Mama takes us on because I'm positive she can make it happen. She just needs to get... Uh, you know, uh, 10 million uh, votes, voters, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, 10 million owners of Tesla just to, to put together a petition and send it to uh, to the uh, Congress and say, look, modify, might, but not destroy. Might be tough to do if they, since they haven't sold 10 million. No, no, 10 million uh, sh shareholders. Oh, I see. 10 million shareholders, the 10 million retail shareholders of, of Tesla. I gotcha. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's a lot of votes. Now, some of them are in other countries, but it would. Anyway, that's my hope. My hope is modify, do not destroy. Um, and then, but on the other side of the coin, we've also got if what what I think the people were talking about in the articles I read would be just to have Trump and Elon on the same page would cause Republican voters to potentially give another look, which could be a, a real positive. All right. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what you'd want me to say about that. I mean, it's, there's no charging where they live. There's less charging where most oh, okay. of them but, live. What about, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're only talking about the, you were mentioning the rural areas, but I mean, there's lots of, yes. there's lots and lots of sure. voters sure. in suburbs and cities and sure. else as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, th those are areas where they could, as easily lose sales from blue voters. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you? Do you, so, I'm not as much worried about the public's perception of Elon in terms of sales. Uh -huh. uh, it's the legislation that's that's what sure, that has that's been assured worried. to follow, and I appreciate that you're hopeful that uh, um, a compromise solution would be offered, but nobody has brought that up yet. 
Nobody anywhere in politics has said amend. Amend isn't what they're after. It's repeal. It's get rid of the parts we don't like, flat out, no compromise, get them gone. So I'm not sufficiently naive to assume that something that's never even been suggested will happen. Yeah, I suppose last thing, last idea is that typically in a in a uh, legislative environment like we have is that you're going to ask for what you think is the extreme. Uh, the other side is going to say, no, 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 we don't want to give up anything. And then that's where the negotiating begins to happen. And you end up with the Missouri compromise or you end up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, compromises between nations, compromises between states, compromises between people. And so, yeah, it, it could be that there's an extreme. I have to believe one of the things one of the things that is also true is a lot of politicians say things they don't in their heart believe. Did you know that? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Let me write this down. Write this Do down. not believe. Okay, I got that. So, so I think I think there could be a few closet, uh, you know, Trump, uh, Trump, um, uh, EV lovers uh, in the Republican side of the legislature. Uh, who could be the ones who would find that uh, that that road? Anyway, zero of them yeah. voted for the IRA. Yep. So so that closet must be locked. Yeah, yeah. The closet's locked. Well, n- until after the election. See, that's how it works. You can't say it. No, but we already election. voted on the IRA once, and one hundred percent of them oh, voted no, no, against I know. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. the IRA that was pro- again the IRA that was passed, even Elon was against. He said specifically he was against mm-hmm. the IRA. So even Elon was against that one. So the IRA that was passed, not surprising that everybody was against. An IRA that was modified, I don't know that Elon would be for either because he said he didn't really want any subsidies. That's what he said that before. Well, he said he doesn't want any subsidies for anyone. And I know you've said you did a whole show on the non-existent oil and gas subsidies, which I went ahead and looked up. Okay. Do exist, do exist. Uh, if you'd like to hear a quick rundown of how it works, because there are direct subsidies where they'll pay them to build things like clean coal, which is not clean coal. It's just, they're getting paid to build a coal plant, um, and gasification where they will convert dirty fuel into a slightly different dirty fuel. But the biggest subsidies they get are tax accounting ones. So for example, they can do, uh, they can depreciate the percentage of a well reserve rather than the part that they actually used, meaning they can write off in depreciation more than they spent on extraction, more. So that gives them billions in taxes. The other one that they get is last in first out accounting rather than first in first out, which means if I, over the last five years, extracted a hundred gallons from this well, Mm -hmm. Some of them at a buck a barrel, some of them at a hundred bucks a barrel. I can write off the hundred dollar a barrel ones first. I can write off the most expensive ones rather than the least, which vastly reduces their taxes. So my my recollection on that one is that you get to choose as a company, whether you use FIFO or LIFO, but you just have to be consistent. You can't switch around. You can't, okay, this quarter I'm going to do LIFO, next quarter I'm going to do FIFO. Right. Not all companies get that. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. my company did, I think. I think we had a choice. Mm. We had to make the choice. Uh, and then the other thing is that uh, oil is heavily subsidized by other countries as well. Oh, yeah. um, and anybody subsidizing it anywhere redu- resu- reduces the global cost. Yeah. Um, so, And nobody is yet... Uh, internalizing the costs of the damage. So when I go to a gas pump and the people say, what are you doing here? That's a Tesla. I say, I need gas for my lawnmower. Uh, I'm not paying for any of the externalized, any of the external uh, issues that are raised by the consumption of fossil fuel. And that's unique. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So I understand all of those. I, I was, my main claim would be that there's no, very clear difference. In other words, you have 
the base sports industries get that same depreciation thing that you were talking about that oil companies get with regard to the salaries that they pay. Um, there's all kinds of other situations where depletion makes more sense than depreciation. Um, and so there's the, what I looked at and I, you know, I studied this in law school and what I looked at the, the, the kinds of accounting principles that they got to use, the kind of tax principles they got to use were very much like other corporate uh, situations as opposed to being these, you know, $7,500 off on a car. And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I love 7,500 is very direct. It's yeah. very easy to label. Uh, the last thing I would leave you with on this is Elon said that they're, that oil and gas are subsidized. And if you're calling him a fool, well, sir, I will leave that to the commenters to address. Yes. Well, I, I, I would like you, well, Elon, would you let us know which specific subsidy you were talking about? Because I can't find it. I need to hear you. It, let, let us know which one you were talking about, or were you just reading headlines? And you know, I'm 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 I am totally willing to learn that so far nobody has been able to show me in any on X or here in the comments below. You just you gave me several, and I and I I recognize that some of those. I'll send you some links. Okay, send me some links. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm believe me, I want to learn. I'm always excited to find out the things that I'm not clear on and get some clarity. But the things you were talking about, dep depletion, um, uh, et cetera, these are not outside the norm with regard to what I understand as corporate tax law. Um, I'm looking for something that's really way more specific, like let's say I, a, a, a hundred billion dollars to drill a well, you know, are, you know, uh, over and above, just here, here's a gift. You get to have this money just to go out and, and test drill. Now that used to be true. Years now ago, I, I look forward to really your correction video in, in the, <laughs> Good, the next yes. week or so. I am excited to do it. Let's do it next Monday. <laughs> All right, Brian, thank you for a spirited debate about a subject that you and I are very passionate about. And to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.